This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that I've created the walk path, I'm going to open the walk designer. So I'll come to my window menu and come down to walk designer here. And the designer interface appears. Now you've got a number of different controls here to use. There's a preview pane here that shows you a preview of the current walk settings. When you click on the walk button, I'll just click that for the moment. You'll see that figure animating there. And also you can change the figure type. Now I want to use the figure type that I've actually loaded into my scene, which is Allison. So if I click on my documents folder and search for the right figure, I'll just go to where my Poser Pro installation is. And I need the characters folder here. Into Poser 8 and Allison. And there's the figure I've loaded, Allison Casual. So I'll just click on Open there. And this will load the CR2 files for this particular figure. You can see a whole pile of things being entered there. And you can see the figure has changed into the figure that I'm using. Now if I pull down the blend styles here. There's a number of different styles you can blend in. If I just turn up the P6 power here to 100% just by clicking on the slider or 108%. If I click on the walk button, you can see the figure striding away there. That's the view from the side and the view from the front. No, I'll just stop that for the moment because I don't want to use that style. That's just one style click on the value there to make it zero. All I'll do is use the P6 sexy slider here and I'll bring that up to 9%. That will be enough to make her walk in a slightly more feminine fashion. If I click on the walk button now, you now that's a bit more sensible. Again you can change the views and for the top as well. And I'll go back to three quarter view for the moment. Now I've set my blend styles here. I could adjust things such as head bounce, but that isn't terribly practical. I can adjust arm swing. But for the moment I'll just pretty much leave it at 0%. And then I'll click on the apply button. I'll press the stop button on the animation first. And there's a few more options I can include here. I'm working with the Allison casual figure, that's confirmed there. I could have the figure walk in place if I wanted, or I'll make it follow the path, since I've set up a path. There's only one path in the scene, but they would appear on the list here if I had more than one. And then you can align the head to one step ahead, or the end of the path, or the next sharp turn. So what I'll do initially is to set it up for one step ahead. And since I have a pose at the beginning and the end of my animation, I'll make sure that transition boxes are clicked here. So the transition from the start pose to the first step of the walk will be 15 frames, which is half a second. And the transition from pose at the end is 15 frames as well. That's another half second. And you can see here that the animation is automatically set 391 frames. Now I've got a few more than that. So what I'll do is manually change that to 400, and that's the length of my animation that I set earlier. And I want to include the animation in the base layer, so I'll just click the radio button there to make it in the base layer. Now if I don't adjust the end frame count here, something very strange will happen. Instead of the figure stopping at the end of the animation, it will actually automatically skate back to the first frame, and that's not very desirable. So as long as you make your end frame here match the end frame that you set earlier, everything should just work out fine, and the figure will transition between the two separate animations. So if I click on the OK button, that will now be applied. It takes one or two moments to do all the calculations. What's actually happening is that Pozo is working out all the keyframes that are needed for the animation. So if I just click the What Designer there, and then shut it, now everything should be set up. I'll just run the animation from the top view here so you'll see what happens. So if I just click on the play button, Allison sets off along the path, and then she turns the corner, and then she heads off to the end point. And since the animation set on loop, it'll just do that over and over again. So I'll just stop the animation. I'll turn off the loop radio button there. 
And then I'll change the camera view just a bit, making sure I'm on frame one. I'll come into the auxiliary camera view and then I'll just zoom out slightly so you can see Alison going through the whole animation. She's taking up quite a bit of space there, so I'll just lift that up slightly. And if I click the animation again now, you'll see a little bit more clearly what's going on. She's starting off in the first pose I set there, and she sets off into the walk animation, and away she goes. Turning the corner, and then she'll end up at the position at the end. That could do with a little bit of tweaking there. You can see just at the end of the animation, Alison is kind of skating into her final position. If I change that to the posing camera, it'll follow Alison then as she walks along. You can see the path just at her feet there. But this is a good basis to start off your animation. Things could be tweaked as you go along. If I just advance the slider to the end of the animation, if I just step it forward one at a time, that could actually be manually altered by adjusting the keyframes. You can see her feet are just sliding into the final position there. That's because it's automatic tweening and Poser is just clicking away. I can also change the position of the figure to make sure it's not dropping through the floor as well. And that's probably a little bit out of scope for this particular chapter, so we might look at that separately. But there are tools included with Poser that can help you tweak lots of your animations.